Senator from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I would ask unanimous consent to use a, a proper two during my remarks. Without objection. Mr. President, today I would like to talk about a distasteful subject to me. I get angry whenever I think about it. Fentanyl dealers. I hope there's a special place in hell for them. Fentanyl dealers. Uh, today is National Fentanyl Awareness Day. Last year, fentanyl, or actually in 2021, fentanyl killed 71,000 Americans. Um, if you break down these sterile statistics, you'll see that uh, somebody in our country dies from fentanyl poisoning every seven seconds. There ought to be a special place in hell for fentanyl dealers. Um, and these, are, the, these aren't just sterile statistics, Mr. President. These are real people. And they have real families whose lives are torn apart. A lot of these deaths occur, uh, occur among young people. Uh, fentanyl is now the leading cause of death for Americans who are 18 to 49. From 2020 to 2021, fentanyl deaths in our country increased by 24%. It was even more among young people. What you allow is what will continue. And today, this body, the United States Congress, allows fentanyl dealers to carry on their person, if they would like to, Enough fentanyl to kill 20,000 Americans before they face a mandatory five-year minimum sentence if they're caught. Until these fentanyl dealers have to deal themselves with real consequences, I think the carnage is going to continue. I have a bill. It's called the Fairness and Fentanyl Sentencing Act of 2023. And it will change what I just talked about drastically. It will reduce the amount of fentanyl that a fentanyl dealer has to possess before facing the mandatory minimum five years of, pr of prison. Now, Mr. President, I know you know this, but when you're dealing with fentanyl, the amounts really matter. Fentanyl is 50 times more potent than heroin. Not five, not 15, 50 times more potent. It takes only two milligrams to kill you. Here's a pencil. Here's the point of the pencil. The amount of fentanyl you can put on the point of a pencil will kill you. Let me say that again. The amount of fentanyl that you can put on the point of a pencil will kill you. Today, fentanyl dealers can carry up to 40 grams of fentanyl before they face the minimum five year, mandatory minimum five years of prison. And with me today, Mr. President, is my co one of my colleagues, Mr. Wesley Davis, uh, who's also a good lawyer, I might add. This is 40 grams of fentanyl. It's not actually fentanyl, it's flour. But if the flour were fentanyl, this would be 40 grams. You can, you can have this much you have to have this much before you get a minimum five-year sentence. And remember the pencil? Enough to, to, to go on the head of, that goes on the head of a pencil 
can kill you. But you've got to have this much. I don't know how many pencil points this is, but it's a lot. You've got to have this much to get a minimum five-year sentence. 40 grams. It would kill 20,000 people. It will kill, this amount will kill every member of this body 200 times over. Every member of this body 200 times over. And thanks to us and our, the laws that we pass, the, uh, the, the fentanyl dealer would just get a minimum five year sentence. That other bag. Now this this bag has 400 grams in it. It's flour, but fentanyl would 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 uh, represent the same thing. This has 400 grams. You have to have 400 grams, given the laws that we have passed, to face a mandatory 10 year sentence. 400 grams will kill 200,000 people, dead as a doornail. Shreveport, Louisiana, and in my state, some of you have been there. If you haven't, you should visit. Is home to 184,000 people. So a dealer could have has to have 400 grams an amount that would kill every man, woman, and child in Shreveport, 400 grams, in order to get a mandatory 10-year sentence. Now, these sentencing guidelines do not reflect how much damage can be done with just a little bit of fentanyl. For example... Fentanyl dealers face the five-year mandatory minimum sentence if they had five grams of amphetamine. Here's my chart here. To get a minimum of five years in prison, you have to have just five grams of methamphetamine. But you have to have 40 grams of fentanyl, which is 50 times more powerful than heroin. I mean, does that make any sense to anyone? Now, meth's a bad drug. I'm not defending meth. But it's not nearly as lethal as fentanyl. This stuff will kill you. And people deal with it every day in America. They deal it every day. And they're not facing consequences. In 2021, in fact, meth killed... Less than half as many people as fentanyl. Yet fentanyl traffickers, fentanyl dealers, I don't want to call them traffickers because that, that sounds too, too, too uh, tame to me, too beige. They're dealers. They're drug dealers. They're death dealers. Fentanyl dealers can possess eight times as much fentanyl before facing the same mandatory minimum sentence as somebody who's dealing meth. We need a sentencing scheme that looks like somebody designed the damn thing on purpose. Now, we need to have a criminal code that reflects fentanyl's lethal force. My bill, the Fairness in Fentanyl Sentencing Act of 2023, it's pretty simple. It will cut the fentanyl threshold for the five-year mandatory minimum sentence from 40 grams to 2 grams from 40 grams to 2 grams. Now, you're not going to have 2 grams of fentanyl on you unless you're dealing. It would reduce the legal threshold for fentanyl analogs as well. Fentanyl analogs, these are synthetic uh, copycats of fentanyl. And actually, they can be even more lethal than pure fentanyl itself, these analogs. Today, if a a dealer can carry up to 10 grams of fentanyl analogs, today, I should say, a a, a dealer can carry up to uh, 10 grams of fentanyl analogs before facing the five-year mandatory minimum sentence, and my my, uh, bill would drop that threshold down to half a gram. 
By doing this, Mr. President, my bill helps our criminal code reflect the reality that fentanyl is not like other drugs. It's not. I mean, as bad as meth is, as bad as PCP is, as bad as crack cocaine is, as bad as heroin is, as bad as powdered cocaine is, fentanyl is in a class by itself. The drug cartels who operate south of our border have found that fentanyl is a cheap way to cut corners and to make more money. They use fentanyl to make other drugs. They, use, they put fentanyl into cocaine, they put it into heroin, which makes the final concoction cheaper and more powerful. Today, everything from marijuana to Adderall can be laced with lethal amounts of fentanyl on the black market. It gives the concoction more kick, and the drug dealers make more money, which is all they care about. And if the drug dealers don't measure it right, it'll kill you. Now look, we all know that young people experiment. And many young people, I dare say most young people, are going to try drugs. When, when my son, who, who I love more than life itself, was a, young, a, a youngster, he's no longer young, well, he's, he's young. I consider you and I young, Mr. President. Um, but when, when my son was growing up, he's now a grown man, uh, I would lecture him about drugs, and I'd say, don't use them. I knew he was going to try them, but I'd say, don't use them. He said, Dad, why? You get addicted. You get addicted. And I was always terrified that my son would, would, would get addicted, would fall in with the wrong crowd. Um, that conversation today is different for parents with young teenagers. Now it's you can't even try it once, not not fentanyl. You can't even try LSD or meth or PCP or crack cocaine or heroin or powder cocaine. You know why? Because it might have fentanyl in it. The drug dealers, the drug dealers cut these products with fentanyl. And if they put too much in it, you get one shot. One shot. Forget addiction. The first time a young person experiments might be the last. Now, my, my state of Louisiana, like every other state in this country, has seen the carnage of fentanyl. We all have. In 2021, 94% of drug overdose deaths in New Orleans were related to what? Fentanyl. In Louisiana, we call our counties parishes. Our coroner's office in East Baton Rouge Parish investigated 300 overdose dose deaths. 88% of them last year were linked to fentanyl. In the average month in St. Tammany Parish, or county, where I live, we lose 10 or 11 people just about every month. 10 or 11 young people, usually, to fentanyl overdoses. And why? These aren't... These aren't people just taking fentanyl. These are people taking other drugs that drug dealers, each of whom should be assigned a special place in hell, other dealers are cutting with fentanyl to give the concoction more, a, a, a higher high to make more money. And if, and, and, and if they measure wrong, and put too much fentanyl in it, you get to try their product one time, and then you're dead. These are sons. These are daughters. These are friends. These are co-workers. And every one of them has a family. 
Now, while our families and our kids are suffering, the cartels and the drug dealers who help them in America are getting rich. There was a recent report from the Department of Justice, Mr. President. It stated that fentanyl dealing is one of the Sonoma cartel's most lucrative endeavors. That cartel is led by three of El Chapo's sons. We're not talking, we're not talking choir boys here. They have made a boatload of money selling poison to our children. But it's not just them. It's dealers in the United States as well. Our Customs and Border Protection officers are working as hard as they can to stop drugs from coming into this country. But their hands are tied by our bad policies. More people have crossed the border in the last year than at, than at any time in the history of ever. That's a fact. More than 5 million people have entered this country illegally under President Biden during the Biden administration. I only have 4.6 million people in Louisiana. So imagine just us adding another state the size of Louisiana. And the problem is expected to get worse. As we know, Title 42 expires next week. And more people will be coming in. Um... But, but, but it's not just folks who are coming into our country illegally. And, 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 and let me say, I, I, don't, I, I don't hate migrants. I don't hate immigrants. I love immigrants. I, I mean, we're a nation of immigrants. But we have a legal immigration system. And we ought to follow it. And most Americans, they distinguish between legal immigration and illegal immigration. And if you support legal immigration, as I do, and oppose illegal immigration, that doesn't make you a racist, as some people think. Um, the, the American people oppose illegal immigration and support legal immigration for the same reason they, they lock their front doors at night. Most Americans don't lock their front doors at night because they hate everybody on the outside. They do it because they love people on the inside, and they want to know who's coming in and out. And, and, and they're happy to welcome. I'm happy to welcome Nigerian doctors and German engineers and whomever to come into our country legally. But vetting people at the border is not racist. It's prudent. But a lot comes across that border, and not just people. A lot of fentanyl does as well. In 2022, the Customs and Border Protection seized 14,000 pounds of fentanyl, a 127% increase from the previous year. That's enough fentanyl to kill every man, every woman, every child in the United States. Now, we've got to show the cartels and the people in America, in our communities who are dealing this stuff, that there are consequences for poisoning people, and especially young people. I've, uh, I've also introduced a bill called the Notorious Aggressive Remorseless Criminal Organizations and, Synd and Syndicates Act of 2023. It's, it's known as the Narcos Act. It'll designate these cartels as foreign terrorist organizations. And we need to give our border agents the resources to, to uh, secure the border and to stop these uh, dealers before they set foot in our country. Well, let me return to the Fairness and Fentanyl and Sentencing Act of 2023. It's not going to solve the problem, Mr. President, but it's a start. Dealers carrying enough fentanyl to kill a small town deserve to face a minimum mandatory sentence of five years. And they deserve to be punished more severely than someone carrying meth or PCP or crack cocaine. Because fentanyl is in a, is in a class by itself. And without serious prison sentences for these drug dealers who put money over human life, we're not going to make progress. 
A five-year prison sentence can close one stream of fentanyl into our communities, and it might deter the next person who's looking to make a quick buck while trafficking this poison. I want to be clear. I'm, I'm, I'm almost done, Mr. President. My bill is not looking to punish addicts. My bill will not punish addicts. Now, I believe in free will and responsibility. But I also think that there are mitigating circumstances in the nitty-gritty of life. And that's why if you're, if, you, if you're an addict and you're convicted of a crime, a serious crime, a judge will consider mitigating circumstances like addiction. I wouldn't wish addiction on my worst enemy. This bill isn't about addiction. A lot of these people don't even take their, their own product. This is about people, fentanyl dealers, who deal death every day to make money. And there ought to be a special place in hell for them. And this Congress, this Senate, punishes them less than we punish somebody dealing meth. Mr. President, as if in legislative session, I ask unanimous consent that the Judiciary Committee be discharged from further consideration of S-878 and the Senate proceed to its immediate consideration. Further, Mr. President, I ask that the bill be considered read a third time and passed and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table.